Who wants to live on less and less income the older you get? Shouldn't the goal be to make more and more income as long as you live? Welcome to the Freedom Point Real Estate Podcast, where we talk about creating more time freedom through passive real estate investing. Passive investing in real estate challenges conventional investment wisdom. We are passionate about learning and sharing resources with others who are ready to transform their investing mindset. Quick disclaimer as always, I am not a CPA, I am not an attorney or a financial advisor. This is not financial advice, not telling you or anyone else what to do. The views and opinions expressed in these podcasts are provided for education and informational purposes only and are not necessarily the views of my employer, ADP. I'm glad you're here. Now let's dig in. Welcome back, Freedom Point listeners. I'm your host, Jeremy Dyer. In today's episode, we're talking about being rich versus being wealthy. I'm going to share my opinion on the two. As you can imagine, this is a very subjective topic. And if you go and research this on your own, you're going to find a lot of very opinionated people, lots of different perspectives. So starting out with the word rich to me, this pertains to active income. So let's consider, for example, a celebrity, a professional athlete, perhaps even a lottery winner. These individuals may find themselves in the rich category. And according to a survey conducted by the U.S. News and World Report last year, they defined the various income levels in the United States as follows. Poor being $32,000 or less annualized income. Middle to lower class, $32,000 to $53,000. Middle class being $53,000 to $106,000. Upper to middle class being $106,000 106000 to 374000 and then basically rich being $375,000 and above. So in essence, anybody making $375,000 annualized income would be considered rich, at least based off these metrics and this particular survey. Now, when I was a child, I had a goal in my lifetime to be rich. That's something that I aspired to be. However, Later in life, I realized being rich was not all that it was cracked up to be, and I'll tell you why. There are endless examples, as you know, of lottery winners, celebrities, highly paid individuals going flat broke, right? So a professional athlete can quickly make a ton of dough, but their career span is very short. So when they're getting paid, they're elevating up their lifestyle, and when the money dries up, they go broke and they can't afford the lifestyle anymore. Celebrities may have had a big blockbuster film or some kind of breakthrough series that they were on. If they're not recast in something that's going to pay him or her the same or higher, then they've got to keep working all the time. And if they do this, then their career and their income could dry up. And statistically, lottery winners go broke within five years of receiving their windfall. On that note, professional athletes, statistically speaking, go broke about 78% of the time or about three years after their retirement. So there's obviously many reasons as to why people go broke and lose money and can't sustain the levels of wealth required to be in the rich category over the long haul. A lot of us folks that find themselves in these categories might have a short career span that lasts 10, 20, or 30 years, but they may not be able to keep up that through their 50s, 60s, 70s, and even 80s and beyond. It's really at the end of the day, not a repeatable, consistent strategy for most. So now let's switch gears and talk about the term wealthy and my perspective. Wealthy has everything to do with passive income and assets, having enough assets or passive income to completely cover your lifestyle expenses. So let's consider an individual who has lifestyle expenses annually of $70,000 and they have 1 million invested in numerous assets that produce passive income, and their average yield annualized on those investments is 10%. For example purposes, that means they're bringing in $100,000 per year in passive income without them having to work actively, and they're living on 70,000. So there's a bit of margin in there for taxes, volatility, unexpected expenses, et cetera. And in my definition, that person is wealthy. That's what I've always strived to have in my own life. Being wealthy, simply put, is the ability to sustain your lifestyle indefinitely 
contrary to what many believe about the term wealthy and what exactly that means. I have a friend who retired in his 30s with only 750,000 invested. He's a very humble down to earth guy. He doesn't have a need for luxuries. He just lives a very simple and humble existence and he's happy. On the flip side, I've spoken to numerous investors who claim they need hundreds of thousands of dollars per year to sustain their particular lifestyle. So on one hand, you may have an individual that needs less than a million dollars to be deemed wealthy in their own mind. And over here, you've got an investor that may need several millions of dollars invested to sustain their lifestyle to where they would deem themselves wealthy. So we all have our wants and we all have our needs, and that's going to require various amounts of capital depending on the person you're talking to. Now, the Freedom Point podcast is primarily dedicated to the passive investors out there, people seeking passive income. So if that's you, I encourage you to think about three things for yourself. Number one, how much passive income would be enough to sustain the lifestyle that you want to have, whether that's your current lifestyle or an inflated lifestyle down the road that ideally you would like to have. Number two, what's a realistic annualized return or cash flow yield that you could expect through your own investments? And number three, how much capital would be required at that particular annualized yield to net you the type of passive income needed to sustain that particular lifestyle? Something else to consider is if you're living on passive income full time and you're not living paycheck to paycheck, meaning that you can live below your means and have a bit of margin in there, you can use that saved capital every year to reinvest and essentially give yourself a raise so that you have what's known as infinite wealth. In other words, your passive income continues to grow higher and higher every year, at least theoretically. Of course, there's always risk involved and no guarantees, but even though you've retired and living on your passive income in a traditional sense, now consider this strategy that we've been talking about and compare and contrast that to the standard American strategy that most people use, which is working a job through their 60s to 70s, saving money, dumping it into the 401k and the IRAs, and then retiring and hoping that they don't live too long to outlive their money source. Most of the traditional retirement vehicles that we have here in the United States, like a traditional IRA or a 401k, are designed, number one, for a person to not retire until basically a minimum age of 59 and a half without getting heavily penalized. So should the ideal outcome be that you retire on less income than what you made previously? My question would be to you, who wants to live on less and less income the older you get? Shouldn't the goal be to make more and more income as long as you live? So that's a good question and something that I'd encourage you to consider this week. I want to thank you for tuning in to the Freedom Point podcast. I hope you found some value. If we haven't connected, I'm happy to share with you what I'm up to. And ways that you can connect with me is on LinkedIn, Instagram, or at startingpointcapital.com. Thank you again for tuning in. Have a great week, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you for hanging out with us today and for listening to the Freedom Point podcast powered by Starting Point Capital. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Nothing said on this show should be considered financial advice. Before making any financial decision, please consult with a professional. This show is copyrighted by the Freedom Point podcast. Written permissions must be granted before syndication or rebroadcasting. If you're interested in connecting, you can find contact information at startingpointcapital.com.